where we're going. And we are back. Welcome back to Papa G's house number two. I'm excited. I've got Josh Grady. Yeah. Joshua Gerio Mishak Grady. I'm excited. Drummer extraordinaire <laughs> with Dawn. That- <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take the it. best of the best. That is ever. That is of post new metalcore, maybe. Yeah, post new metalcore. <laughs> you don't hear that often, eh? You're never going to hear that again in your life. Promise. But po- post <laughs> new metalcore. China. China. Yeah, China. <laughs> Get with it. What's your, what's your vibe there? Yeah. Oh, there. How are you doing, bro? <laughs> awesome. Thanks I'm for excited. coming. I'm very excited. Good, I'm glad. I've been I'm very glad. Amping myself up for this. Is it? Sick. I'm ready to go. Yeah, now I was I was feeling a little bit lazy earlier on, but uh, you got me going. I got you out of that. We fight. are actually having a little bit of a Cape Town's finest. It's lemonade. It's lemonade. Just but it's lemonade. good lemonade. <laughs> but are you well? What have you been up to? Tell me. Tell me stories. Well, What's happening? The most notable experience over the last week, I would say. Yeah. Gandalf's final show. Jeez, man. It was crazy. Nuts. It was nuts. I'm going to use that word for it. Nuts. nuts. It was nuts. So we opened up the entire, sh- the last show being the second rather than the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yo, even though we played at 8 o'clock, which is usually very early for Cape Town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still packed. Packed, but, packed, packed. Yeah, I mean, I got there. Listen, and I know you were a bit upset with me. I know you missed my final show at Gandalf's, bro. <laughs> I know. I, I apologize from the bottom of, of my heart. You did apologize on the night. I did. And the day after. Yeah. But and uh, there, there were, unfortunately, uh, prior arrangements that uh, I had to attend they were, to. There were prior arrangements. Okay. Happy birthday, Michelle. <laughs> yes, it was Michelle's <laughs> yeah. birthday, of course. Which yeah, I didn't sure. make it to you. Which sure. I did feel Oh, you had sound check and all that jazz. Yeah. At, yeah. Like, at like five o'clock. Yeah. Super early. We're yeah. still light. Yeah. I can still see Gandalf for the last time in the light. It's crazy. Daylight. Man. Yeah, it is nice. It's epic. Look, I mean, I wasn't there for a long time. I knew I wasn't going to be there for a long time because yeah. I knew how packed it was going to be. Yeah. I knew the lineup was just absolutely insane. We actually talked to the, talked about it uh, on the previous episode. Yeah. Did you watch it? I saw uh, glimpses of it. I won't lie. Of the podcast? Oh, no, the I'm podcast! Asking, did you no, see sorry. my first the my podcast? First of course, I saw the podcast. Okay, definitely. Cool. Okay, epic. What did what did you what see glimpses it? of? Okay, what were you? No, no, no. I, I saw glimpses about? of the of the other live bands that night at Gandalf's. A little bit of peasant, a uh, little okay. bit of infanteria. Have to be honest. A little bit of peasant zombies. was the only band I actually managed to watch because I got like squeezed. Yeah, out that's the thing. The door it was it was a you bit claustrophobic. You couldn't go right. You couldn't go forward. But Jesus, when that place is packed, dude, holy. Shit, you you get a really good sound, eh? Like no, of course. Sounds, like, so, no, because all the people all. with all the people absorbing the sound. It, it was uh, let's shout amazing. out to Alan. We yeah, Alan. dude. Um, Alan was a beast that night. And the night beforehand. Yeah, apparently. Man. Well, Alan's just a permanent legend. He is a permanent regardless. beast. Shout I out think. to Alan Simmons. He's oh. been manning the desk. Man, I'm going to miss that guy. Very, very <laughs> uh, hungry local bands. <laughs> yeah. And uh, look, I hope to see him very soon as well. Um, and he actually... Uh, he actually commented on the um, the first video. He was actually the first person to comment on YouTube um, regarding my first episode, and he said he liked the conversation regarding analog versus digital, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hmm. And uh, he gave us insight as to the Pajama Planet um, release, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So thanks, Alan, for tuning in, dude. Yeah, uh, man, really yeah, appreciate I love it. Guys. It's my and, fellow yeah. Viking ginger. And it, actually, while I'm on that topic, I just want to say I didn't expect to get how many views uh, I got on the you first. Got a lot, eh? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I it, definitely I didn't expect it. So thank you, everyone who who checked it out and enjoyed the the vibes and enjoyed the conversational style. Mm. Hopefully, I'll be able to keep it that way going forward. Obviously. Mm. Some people are going, oh, no, he's just going through his friends. But, you know, I've got cool friends, so I'm going to interview them. Well, not interview them. Damn it. There I go again. Not interview. Have a have conversation, conversation with, with them. There we go. Um, so, definitely, uh, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. And I'm definitely excited to start putting more of the stuff out, you know, improve in the video. I'm keen to see who's <clears throat> next. Yeah. I've got, I've got a couple that. of people uh, lined up 
in the I've pipeline. reached out to, to a couple of people, yeah. And and um, another thing is I'm going to have a couple of live performances here in this room as what? well. Yeah, I've lined a couple of that. those up as well, yeah. But th- those will come with time. T- tonight is all about you, Josh. Oh. That's it, bro. Heart is touched. Yeah. But we- we'll find out why uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, but Gandalf's final show... Crazy. Was it everything? It was everything I would have hoped for. I did shed a tear during our last song. Sweet. It's a very emotional it, song yeah, at sure. the same time. Which but song still was at it? the same time, it was uh, Destiny of Death. Okay, nice. So nice. like, you know, it's got that massive ending. Yeah. That ending always gets me. Always. Sure. My favorite song to play out of our, our stuff. Okay. And just having that, that as the last song. Everyone going nuts towards it at the end. Straight in the fields. House. Oh, straight in the fields. I, I blamed it on sh- sweat on the night, tear. obviously. I sweated it now, but I properly shed a tear, you know. Kept on going through my head through that last song. It's the last time I'm going to play at this venue. It's the first venue I ever played at live with Dismantling the Architects. Yeah, we're going to get to all of that. Way eh? back. Yes. So being the, f- I, I could remember the first time and then I, you know, was there for the last time it's like an end of an era you know definitely yeah i, I don't you even uh, got the tattoo that's even even the tattoo yeah exactly i even won the tattoo voucher that i got this tattoo at at gandals jeez so that's yeah it so was very it was a very sad I, I i just couldn't like as soon as i left there that night i was like i can't believe i'm looking back at gandals now for the last time as it is yeah you yeah. know and being like, this is the last time I'm ever going to be here. It was no, for super sure. sad. Look, I think if anybody knows Josh, uh, everybody knows that he's the happiest dude. <laughs> Whenever you <laughs> see him, where, be it uh, where, whatever show, Unclass, Rabbit Hole, Black Irish Now. Black Irish. Wherever yeah. you go. You're playing one soon, right there at Black Irish, aren't you? 30th of June, yeah. Well, you'll see the Soon-ish. happiest guy in the world there. Yeah, it's because that, that's where I want to be. Yeah. Every single moment of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, dude. So tell me what's coming up on the radar with, with Dawn. So it's a bit restricted, mm. which we are getting to. Yeah, indeed. But we definitely have two more lined up in the near future. So 30th of June at yeah. Black Irish, X rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. For, for it's, it's a fundraiser Yeah, for animals. The you name escapes animals. me right now. I love animals. I have it's for kittens. I'm pretty sure. Kitties, kitties, and I just I've just adopted. Well, me and my housemates have just adopted two new kitties last year, and they have made such an impact on my life. It's crazy. <laughs> they are the cutest things I've ever met in my life. Awesome. Honestly. Nice. Cuter than you. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it already. <laughs> yeah. Cheese man. But um, so, and then also 14th of July. Okay, but we'll get to the 14th of yeah. July in a Mark second. Mark that in diaries yeah. now. Look, uh, another thing that that I wanted to say is I, with the response that that was with Papa G's house number one with Jared Ronenberg, mm. is I got a couple of questions and people asking me, "What are you going to do? Are you going to take phone calls and and all that jazz?" And I was like, oh, geez, that's actually quite a good idea. So okay, shout out to idea. Sean Evan from As Time Divides. We featured mm. them last week. Um, well, last week on the first episode uh, with their single Flatline. And that's a bloody good uh, Yo, idea. I love those guys. Um, look, these are also pre-recorded so, and, re- and released later. So I don't know how possible it is now, but that's something I'm definitely looking into. Hey, you've got the technology to do it. Well... Uh, not right now, not right now, but you, have it. you got it. Yeah. Another thing was like, um, a, th- a couple of guys said, Oh no, this is going to be very informative for the local scene, etc., etc." I must say that wasn't the intention in the first episode, mm. but then after hearing a couple of people say, Oh, it's, it's an informative thing for the local underground metal, yeah. hardcore uh, whatever scene and i was like no no no. i was i was mainly going for just my interest the sport and but it turns out my my interest always turns right? 
to Dude. the local <laughs> scene. But it's it's weird. It's like that, that was not the intention. I had plans to talk about, and I still do have plans. Mm. But I always gravitate to that. I mean, obviously because I've had you and I've had Jared, yeah, who have all been closely knit to to the South African it's too scene. musical. But and it, I want to talk about sports. I want to talk yeah. about um, all kinds of things. But UFC, we, but uh, yeah, let's let's do some UFC. I'm gonna do. I'm getting my mate Daniel Schmidt. Yes. Do you know Daniel? Oh, what do you mean do I know Daniel? Yeah. Of course. And we're going to do a full no, no. sport episode. And full we're going to just talk everything sport. Yeah. Also, but also that's going to come fan. eventually. Yes, we're going to talk about that too. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> How do you feel having... Um, ah, okay, let, 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 let's get this over and done with Champions now. League okay, final, Liverpool yeah. Champions League final. Obviously, some new information has now come out in the last week. For, for Carrius, our goalkeeper, the one who no, made. I mean, on on the night, he made. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not not a cons- conspiracy theory over here. Okay, what is it? Then? So now, obviously, he made two glaring mistakes on the night. Yeah. The first goal and the last goal. Yes. Second goal, f- the overhead kick from Bale. That was just a really good mm. goal. First goal, he just tapped it into the defender. Defender got it in. Third goal, butterfingers. So what but, are you saying? Okay, what I'm saying now is that... Okay, what I've heard... I'm not entirely sure how absolutely correct this is, but I've read it from a couple of sources. Yeah. Um, that he was concussed by Ramos with the, with the elbow in the first half of the match. Okay. And Look, I was, didn't watch that. So I can't he really say a, much he about went it. To Euro- Where did he go? He went to a, a, a specific clinic in Europe, I think. Who went to go get get him tested for head injuries? And he CTI. actually got a proper no, head, no, no, head injury at the game. So Concussion. now they kind of. I don't want to. It sounds like an excuse when I say it. As a proper Liverpool fan, I'm going to say that now Karius was obviously concussed for the stupid goals that he let in. But it sounds like an excuse. You know what I mean? That sounds like a massive excuse. But at the same time, from a couple of sources, it has been verified. That he was... Dude, I mean, I, did you see that elbow on him? I, you didn't watch I, the game. Like, I, I watched like I'm the saying, game. I, I watched did, that I didn't replay watch. so many times. Everybody Ramos went in with the elbow a, and gave him a proper clap. This is a very passionate <laughs> Liverpool fan, right, Joe? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no, let's it, get it into it. Just, I want to no, hear well, you rant. <laughs> you know, that's, it does irritate me that um, it, it's seen as an excuse. And okay. fair enough, I've been reading why a, lot, you a, a lot of Liverpool sources... Why are you using it as an excuse? Because it was a bad loss. And we should have won it. Sure. But Rail have won, won, what, three years in a row? They have won three years in a row. But with players like Ramos, who I dislike with a strong, strong passion now. Okay. (laughs) Especially since he got Salah injured. Okay. Luckily, Salah's not out for the World Cup. All right. He's still in the Yeah, he hurt his left hand, eh? Left shoulder. I saw... saw, uh, Left shoulder. uh, Actually, one thing Actually, I saw on Instagram. Left uh, shoulder, yeah. Yeah, there was a MMA breakdown of, of what happened. <laughs> it was an arm lock. Y- exactly. You see him? Well, it was a judo throw. Mm. <laughs> and even uh, judo throws wouldn't It even actually looked like that. a judo throw, but, you know, unintentional. It was, yeah. When I saw that, saw him go down for the first time. Shame. Kudos to the guy. He got up. He tried again. Yeah. Got brought down in the box again. And then he was like, no. Okay. And he was in tears, man, of course. He's like... No, for sure. At the moment, after this season that we've just had, he's our star player at the moment. Like, Well, didn't he score like 32 goals? Yes. One golden boot. Yeah, he won the... He set a record for... I, th- I think it was in a 38-game Premier League season. Mm-hmm. He scored the most goals. It's insane, man. I think. Comments can back yeah. me up on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Daniel Schmidt will probably have a couple words. Yeah, that. definitely. He's probably listening now, going, "Um, no, your stats are I'm incorrect." I'm pretty sure that's correct. No, that's he, he broke a couple of records. I'm this, not judging this, you. Um, Put it that way. Yeah, because I don't know these things. And nor nor should you. I'm just going. Yeah, <laughs> Kiff, football, rad, right? <laughs> like a, I even said when I first started doing the plan of this whole podcast, I was like, "Kiff, sport, UFC, rugby, da 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 da." 
Dot, 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 uh, Soccer, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but it's good to see Look, it, it, it is the most commonly followed sport I would, worldwide, I'd imagine. Yeah. Well, the only reason I had a dig at Liverpool last week, well, last last first episode was because uh, you guys are such <laughs> big fans. You know a lot of Liverpool supporters. I do. Sure. I do. But so, I know, I equally know a lot of, um, a lot of Manchester United and um, Chelsea supporters. Okay. They haven't done much better than us. Okay. Well, anyway, season, moving honest. on from the football talk, I want to talk about... Um, one thing that's been bugging me. What's been bugging and it's, you? Guys? And it's in it's it's more around the music thing. Okay. Have you noticed how much hate Parkway Drive has received with their new album Reverence? <laughs> oh, you can't ask me this question, man. You can't ask me. No, no, no. I can. I can. But I'm gonna agree with the haters. No, sorry. I disagree with everyone. I know you do, but I think. I mean, it's okay. You are the most Parkway Drive. Like hardcore fan, you are though. You introduced me to them. No, I appreciate you gave me their good albums. music. Yeah, but this is okay. Okay, look for for what it is as a standalone album. If you look at it, careful what you say. People are gonna hear. I know. I'm <laughs> trying to. Brian Binneman fucking come at me, bro. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> She's all right. But as a standalone album, that's a it's, call it's, out. It's right not. Then. It's not bad music, right? What they're mm. writing now, it's just. So far removed from their previous four albums. No, but uh, hey, listen, he, yeah, he's going to agree with you. No, I know. Yeah, no, he didn't say come at me. He's going to be right. Oh no, right no, Brian Brindman agree with me over yeah, here yeah. because their previous what five albums and an EP, yeah, four albums and an EP, was a certain style that I loved. I, I've, I listened yeah, to those sure. albums on an almost maybe not a daily basis, but a weekly basis. Sure, you've got a strong opinion and, on it, there. Yeah, of course I do. And look, like, okay, fair enough. I haven't listened to it. Start to finish, which is you maybe see, that's your the, first problem. Yeah, but it, I have listened to the, the songs that aren't the singles. You know what I mean? There's only been three singles, two yeah, singles. Wishing so no, no, I'm, I'm saying that I have, oh, lis- I have listened to the other tracks in between them. Yeah. And it just sounds like they're going commercial, unfortunately. No, you see, like a lot of metal core bands. No, do. I don't. That's no. It's such an easy road for to me, slip that's, down. That's nowhere near commercial, brother. Let me tell you exactly it's what's happening. What what I think is happening. Okay. Listen, I'm going to have to like make that disclaimer bold. Make it bold. Bro. Make it lank bold. Like almost it's write it our twice so if you miss it. Yeah. It doesn't matter what so anyone else my, my feeling is killing with a smile. Oh, don't close your eyes. Yeah. Killing with a smile. Mm. Uh, horizons. Uh, Deep Blue. Atlas. Aya, before even before Aya, all amazing albums, amazing. Aya was even a bit rocky, no, but that's why I'm I'm taking Aya out of the situation. Yeah. Okay. So before that, they were building them up themselves up to be a massive entity, right? Yes. No. Yes. Give me your opinion. Okay. No, I'm saying yes, but a lot of bands have that. What? A lot of bands have have you know no, no, no. super good you've got to also realize that they shot to to superstardom in terms no, of that you can't you can't they, having they really six did. albums calling shot to stardom that is a, a gradual build up no 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 they've Dude. got a certain amount of fans and now i feel like they're letting their fans on now at the moment listen you've you, you're not hearing me out you're not actually hearing me out sorry. i need okay because that's why I, I, I started taking out Aya and yeah. um, but you and can't take out Aya that's the thing you can that's when they started changing the stuff up but I understand why they got to a point where they were playing big festival shows lots of outdoor venues festival season every year like recently they've just played um, Rock Am Ring in Germany it was literally this weekend like on Saturday I saw the photos of okay? that okay yeah. hear me out massive now I watched the entire show and I encourage everybody listening to go and watch. If, if they're a Parkway fan, fan or a Parkway hater, it doesn't matter. If you have any interest on what I'm talking about, go have a look at it and see what I, what, what, if, if my opinion actually matches what we, we're trying to say. Mm. Because back in the day, Killing with a Smile, I, um, 
even not even atlas like uh, horizons and deep blue those are still songs that you can play in a small packed venue etc etc but now they've got to a point where they're playing these massive festivals and the playing the pace songs that they used to write it actually doesn't really fit well in a festival setting doesn't it though what's still playing it I, I i understand but they've got a, a mixture between all their new and old songs in that set but say take like karma for instance it's a really fast wow. song and then I love karma. it it doesn't sound as crisp and clear as say the void or pray of their new album reverence i think they're evolving their sound because they know the type of environments that they're going to be playing in let alone because remember they've got their old material they're still going to whip out idols and anchors they're still going to whip out all that kind of stuff yeah so i think it's a very good decision i think the music's great i think they're keeping it simple in order for it to be effective and they're writing what they wanted what they want to write and then they know and how they know that they're going to be able to translate that to a rockham ring or a download festival etc etc anyway that's feels, my opinion it feels done. like selling out well if, that, you, if you're gonna have that if i don't that, so. that kind of reason behind your music just because you're gonna play to massive crowds then i feel like you lose it a bit i mean look at okay classic no, classic disagree. example bring me the horizon my word no, but that's another example where those I'm like, oaks back in the day and I they went the and stuff. they went commercial you see i hate the new stuff Pray for plagues, and this is what the edge of your seat made, was made for. Mm. And suicide season; those are the only three Bring Me the Horizon albums I still listen to. Mm. Because after that, I'm not even sure what was after that, but I heard a couple of singles, and I was like, "This just isn't for me." Yeah. They just lost their root, and now all they're doing yeah. is catering for the big crowd. Yeah, sure, sure. Which is surely in metal, really isn't what you want to do. Yeah. You know no, what sure. I mean? No, well, yeah, I mean, I agree. And uh, the thing is, that's not a very um, good example for me because I really like uh, That's the Spirit. I think oh, it's great. And as soon as I heard that, uh, immediately spelt out of my head was selling out. I think it's great. And I fair enough, they're awesome. making more money. They're going on bigger tours. You know, they're making a Must big name that, for themselves. Um, but you know what? They're actually man. losing the, the spirit of what they've... Was, well, Losing the that, spirit, that what first, they're doing. That first EP, Wembley no, Stadium. Really, that first EP <laughs> that they ever came out with, both of them, Bring With Horizon and um, Parkway Drive. Hmm. Those two albums, they're so rough, they're so raw. It's like you could have recorded it in sure, here sure. or could have recorded it anywhere in Cape Town, you know what I mean? Like a rough studio. Like any first EP should sound. And it's just yeah. lost that spirit, I find. I can't headbang along to that, that stuff anymore. I was going to so say something in, a lot in worse saying there. that, in saying that, <laughs> move, move, moving from negativity to positivity. Yes, let's go positive. <laughs> is if if that doesn't do it for you, what is currently doing it for you? And I know exactly what you're going to say. You know what I'm going to say. So I've been extremely. Oh, who to bring up first? There's there's two bands that are being highlighted very recently. Let me go for less controversial. Controversial. First. Controversial. Yeah. Perry tomorrow. Why would it be controversial? I'll, when I get to the next okay. band, you'll understand why it's okay. controversial. So Perry tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Black Flame. My word. Okay. I have listened to the song. To Is death. that an album? I'm not sure. It's a single that they came out with before the okay. album. I think the album might be called Black Flame. But okay. either way, that Black Flame single is the most played song on my YouTube playlist at the moment. It is okay. incredible. I love cool. it. it. Check I've it out. Loved, Black I, Flame. Again, like, Barry like Barry Tomorrow, yeah? tomorrow is one of those things. One of those bands that I can listen to every single album with the whole way through without skipping a song. One of my top five favorite bands ever. Definitely. I remember Union In, of Crowns. That was a You actually album. introduced me to Barry tomorrow. And so I must thank you for that. Thank you. First one. Oh, I appreciate Ma that. Man of Fire. I'm pretty sure yeah, on the screen uh, over here. But that's, that's the newer stuff, eh? I mean, the, that the, was I mean, the, 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 the not, previous album. Yeah. The but because of that song, uh, 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 I got that uh, album uh, and then I got the previous three albums there's earthbound runes runes union runes, of crowns and portraits and portrait and then i've also got the ep waxed wings okay the, i can't i can't stop listening that is like top cool. five all favorite bands guys got tomorrow. a very interesting Yo. um scream. 
Scream. Yeah. yeah. Scream, growl. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And initially, like a, I didn't like it. It's very in. It's like, oh, yeah. God. And it, it's guttural, but initially I didn't like it. It's but almost it like he's me and now I love in. it. Like, it's almost like he's breathing in. It's incredible. And I actually, their new album was out end of last month, mm. end of May, if not the 1st of June. Well, that's now. Yeah, I know. It's out already and I haven't okay. actually listened to it because I'm stupid and I haven't got it yet. <laughs> but I don't know. I haven't got I iTunes it. Cloud or whatever. Ah, like, I, don't, I just need it. <laughs> but if, like if, if if Black Flame, the single is anything to go by, this album is going to be incredible and I can't wait for it. Okay. Those guys are so star. you're obviously a huge Yo. um, fan of metalcore kind of yeah. tunes, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Top five favorite bands are all metalcore. <laughs> oh, so you, okay, hit me, hit me. If, you, if you're so oh, confident to say five. top five. Oh, you, you I was said thinking it. about this. Eh? So, you very tomorrow. It. Oh, it's it, it's difficult to say top five of all time and top five at the moment. But Give me your top five of all time. Top five of all time. All right. Barry Tamarim. Slipknot. Has yeah. to be in there. First band I grew up on. As I lay dying. Ooh. We're going to talk about that just now. There's after been after some I sneaky, say sneaky after movement. I yeah, yeah, that was my next movement. Okay. What's the thing? Yeah. As I lay dying. Devil Soul to Soul. Isn't Absolutely that, top um, five. Howard Jones. No, Devil no, Soul to Soul um, is a, like almost an unknown English band that okay. With Dawn based a lot of its stuff off. Kevin knows With Dawn. Um, obviously, Kevin knows With Dawn. Kevin knows Devil Soul to Soul backwards as well as I do. Probably even before I did because he's old. <laughs> and then yes, Architects. Architects is definitely up there in the yeah, top five. I can listen great. to all of their albums without skipping any song. Yeah, Architects are sick. But As I Lay Dying, exciting news on As I Lay Dying side. I'm I know uh, it's controversial. That's what I was saying. Yeah, I'm a bit... It's like... I'm a bit, he, he, the, the, the front band's just come out of prison. It looks well, like... Well, he hasn't just come out of, uh, out of prison, but I'm a well, bit... Well, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, it was less than a year ago. I don't know. I don't know if and I they've, can they've forgive someone for, for doing something oh, like that. I dig, oh, I dig no. their, um, their music. Their, oh, you know, I'm not going to back the guy up here and say yeah. that he wasn't in the wrong. Look, uh, I saw... He did his time. Exactly. Exactly. He did his and, time. And he, as I lay dying, tried with Adam yeah. and it didn't work. He's, it sounded pretty yeah. terrible, to be honest. He seems to have acknowledged his uh, mistakes, but obviously... That's Imagine the lyrics still that doesn't he's make have. it right. Um, he said, "How many years to write lyrics for songs in prison?" Sure, sure. I mean, I'm not particularly worried about that. I mean, I'm sure the music's going to be good, but yeah. I'm just wondering how he's going to be received. I mean, I guess they managed to get such a big fan base before they hit this big, huge. They also had about block. four albums, I think, at least, and an yeah. EP. I mean, Awakened, Awakened, oh, that, yeah, that I mean, is incredible. When, when that, I was that's... first getting into like writing heavy riffs, I mean, I've always liked heavy riffs, but when I first started getting to more like metalcore-y kind of riffs that mm. turned into to, to the songs that I play today, I was basically listening to a shitload of Ezele Dying. Yeah. And uh, oh, they were pretty much like a huge influence. But then as soon as... I don't know. I'm just like that. It sucks when you're, you're when you're a fan of someone, and something like that happens, and you're like, "Oh my word, I feel like I'm never going to listen to this band ever again." Can and I, that's how, I've, I, and and I still haven't listened to any of their tunes since then. To be honest really? with you, only when other people have put it on. Can I can I tell you a very funny story? What? It's even worse than that, right? So, the first heavy rock metal album that I listened to mm. was Lost Prophets. Ah, I knew, Start something. Somehow I knew you were going to go down. No, that but road. unfortunately, yeah. that Ian was Watkins, that, that was, was a, no, but that was the first album that I listened to when I no imagine that like obviously that kind of offense is like okay now I'm not listening to any of their more any of their shit anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, but the same principle 
for me should be applied if that's gonna oh, if, you're gonna, mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna feel that sounds, way i mean obviously what dude, ian watkins Tim did Lambesis, if it wasn't for his shoddy hitman hiring skills would have succeeded killing his wife but it seems like a of three kids. okay look i'm not defending the guy but that's almost like a snap decision rather than ian watkins being over s- a, brother how many a years snap of decision. time you don't you phone just, a hitman in a snap decision you have to meet the guy, give him an envelope, doing the whole situation. <laughs> the, I, mean, I read know. the whole <laughs> lowdown on how it happened. Yeah, okay. I and that's not a snap decision. That is a calculated decision yeah, that lands no, you in real. jail for nine yeah, years. Um, okay, I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I still feel like still feel This like is going to be a very, very dying. controversial episode of uh, <laughs> Papa G's House. <laughs> I still feel like I can listen to As I Lay Dying whenever I listen to Lost Prophets. Sure. All I can think about is Ian Watkins and what the fuck he did. I'm not going to say no. that on him because there's no need to. No worries, man. But. Okay. Jeez. Moving on. I feel violated moving right on. now. Yeah. Talked yeah. Let's about move on from prison and all that. Let's, let's do something positive. Um, what on your list have you got positive there? On my list is a bunch of things. Oh, <laughs> check this out. Um, I was <laughs> scrolling through Facebook the other day and I thought, I found this very funny post from Red Helen. Um, Red Helen, our Joe Big Buddies. Yeah. Um, I got a sticker. Of, funny, I got a sticker hey? of them on the back. They're of very my funny car. dudes. I remember when I bought a cap, a. You just got a um, cap over there. CD, yeah. A cap, a CD, and a t shirt. He goes, and I walk up to Greg and I'd already paid three. Oh, I think I was going to pay through EFT and whatever. And he goes, Gareth, here's a <laughs> shit for your body. A <laughs> cap for your head. <laughs> And a CD for your ears. That is, that's and I just thought that was very funny anyway. <laughs> um, but then they did a, a post the other day. And not many, many people catch on to these things, but I do. Because I think it's creative and funny. Um, oh, man, it was funny. It was some big post about their jam leading up. They're, oh, they're, there we go. They're, they're like is. Monster. <clears throat> Here it is. Are they Read. sponsored by Monster? Yeah. Shut up. Sorry. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> so it goes, it goes, read in the voice of Sir David Attenborough. Yo, can you do it? Well, let's see. Pan practice from the eyes of the Matty Mat, also known as the Wild Drummy Boy. In the rare spottings of the Wild Drummy Boy, <laughs> this creature can often be seen twirling his long hair and waving around sticks in a bizarre mating ritual. Depicted here, <laughs> we see the rare blonde bearded beast bass boot, also known as G Whiz, <laughs> locked in a musical conversation with a long legged electric fiddle player, aka E Ricky Rick, perhaps discussing quantum physics or other meanings of boobies. Where is the long haired, shouty shout guy named Boogaloo Boogaloo, you may ask? I think it's gone it's, more. It's not bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm, no, no, no. Yeah, but anyway, I thought it was it's funny. Okay. It's hilarious. Love when David you read it in man. David Attenborough's voice, it's geared. David Attenborough's, he's, he's my boy. Anyway, I might he's, have to cut my, that out. My slow boy, don't you dare cut that out. If that's yeah. cut out, I'm going to. Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. But anyway, I think we should get to some sort of point here, my brother. The reason I've got okay. you on, we're 34 minutes into this. Uh, podcast number two and we've talked about everything but the main reason why you here oh is it i think it, i think it's time i think it's time um okay joshua grady <laughs> joshua Hirio mishak grady nailed it um that's my full name just by the way thank my parents he i just want to introduce this um joshua joshua has been Josh. Joshua. I want to call you Joshua. <laughs> anyway, Josh Josh is, uh, is the drummer of the band with Dawn based from Cape Town. I have to say possibly the most active band in the last five years in the local really? f- scene. We just played a Gandalfs a lot. You got, well, you've played a lot of shows, period. Yes, we you've have played, played a, you've lot played of a shows. You've played a shitload of shows, yeah, man. We've played a lot of shows. And um, he's here to send everybody a, a special... <laughs> message which is 
which is is going to hit you it's, in, it's in the hot sad button. Sad specials, but yes, sad I am leaving the country. Second of August, flight booked, going indefinitely. I am emigrating or immigrating, whichever way you want to look at it. Pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. So you leaving on the second of August? Yeah, gone, done. I'll come back here for holidays, but that's about it. Okay. So the reason, obviously we talked about dismantling yeah. the architects and with Thorn, the reason I wanted to get you on is I want to hear your story. I want to put it out for the guys because I know how much this whole scene means to you. Yeah. I and should obviously everybody can see that when they walk into any gig and they see Josh flailing around his octopus <laughs> dreads and with the biggest smile on his big ass ginger face. <laughs> <laughs> so bro tell me from the beginning how did it all start i know you 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 started at wine big boys high yeah and now you yeah here, so it's, and now it's, you're ducking down it's a bit confusing so i'm born in england moved to Joburg, moved back to england moved to cape town 2006 so i was what 17 when i moved here joined a band with gareth ashton Shout outs to Gareth Ashton, Treehouse Burning, yeah. When THB, I was, yeah, baby. When I was literally We'll just, get to that. Yeah, in matric. And then dismantling the architects came from that with Gareth Ashton. Dismantling the architects went on for actually quite a decently long time. About two years, like I said, our first yeah, show was yeah. at Gandalf's. Yeah. Did a couple of Wine Big Sports I actually club. think I saw some cell phone footage. Yeah, it was From weird. It just popped up back. the other I day. Think Kevin, Kevin liked and it or something. Yeah, just popped up the other day, randomly, two days ago. Yeah. So weird. That page is still going. Somehow. Yeah. And um, with old uh, Warren Cox, also moved, immigrated to England. Okay. Not all that long ago, six, seven years ago. And then out of dismantling came with Dawn, just the three, because dismantling was quite big. It was about six members mm. at one point. With a keyboardist and, a, mm, you know, mm. you know, all that. and then me, Kevin, Alistair Dring decided to start with Dawn out of dismantling. I was at that sh that uh, first EP, launch. EP launch. We'll get to that, yeah. Yo, that EP launch, is, I still remember that. At Gandalf's again. See him. And then it's been with Dawn, with Dawn, with Dawn, with Dawn, with Dawn for about going on seven years now. Jeez. So it sucks. I mean, the only reason why, well, one of the reasons why I've stayed so long is because of with Dawn, definitely. Yeah, I know that. And that is, it's so, it was the most difficult conversation I've had in my life. Yeah, I'm sure. To tell those guys that I was leaving. Yeah, for They sure. saw it coming a little bit because I was, I was thinking about it the whole of last year, moving. Well, it, it, it has to be a light your, decision. A couple of your buddies have, have done the same thing, right? From, from Cape Town, yeah. moved over some of your I mean, a lot buddies. of people are doing it. Yeah, like, sure. A couple of my best friends, not in the music scene, have done that. In the last two years. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I visited them end of last year, December last year. And they're having a good life. I won't lie. For sure. Living in a first world country, making the bucks. Making and the pounds, and are say. you planning to, to play any sort of music when you're there? Or are you looking to wait till you've settled down? Yeah, no, I'm going to wait till I've settled down. I mean, initially I'm moving to York, first off, up north. I'm applying for jobs all over the country. So I'm going to wait a little bit until I settle down, okay. find a job, know that I have a certain place to stay in, buy an electric kit, and then practice, practice, practice until I get a band. Sweet. Um, dude, I'm going to miss you, man. I know. Um, Fuck. When did we it's meet? Horrible. We met somewhere along the line, um, but we've it's been, been three, friends ever since. four years ago. About four years, yeah. I mean... Um, We've only been active for off. four years. Yeah. Well, we, we met the first time. Uh, actually, now I remember it. We played the Graham Jam. Yes, man. Yum. We played the Graham Jam. <laughs> Graham got all the stuff stolen. And yeah. <laughs> Shame. And it was a fundraiser to to um, raise funds for Graham Pitto. Yeah. To get his drum stuff back because his uh, drums were stolen out of his car. Mm. And um, it was us... You guys with Thorn, Peasant, and Take Hand. Yeah. That was a really, ah, really fun. Hand, um, yeah, that yeah. popped up on Facebook about a month ago. Not even. I remember, seeing that, I remember seeing that blue poster with, with 
Graham. With Graham, yeah. Mm. No, I think that was me. I actually shared it going... Was it I, you? I, I, Maybe yeah. it was you. I actually got in touch with uh, Mark Jennings, who, who designed the thing. And I've got the print-ready artwork, so it's going up in here. Sure. Yeah. So... That yeah, that that was a very special special show. I really enjoyed that, um, and we've played a number of shows together since then, but we've number, mostly partied um, hard. A shitload of shows we've played together. Yeah, we have. I think there was a stage. It's, in my, it's my sister band, the Landing South. Oh, please, with Dawn's man. sister band. Sister band. <laughs> you, my sister band. Come with your sister band nonsense. We are uh, we older, so we're we yeah. going to take the. Uh, oh, I actually got a bit of stick for the self promotion. No, um, it's fine. No, no, no. Yeah, you, you haven't seen what it's covering. So. Yeah, no, no, no. I, yeah, exactly. No, that's what you said. So. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, look, I'm proud of what what uh, Alan. Dude, that's an awesome so. banner. I, don't, I never see it on stage, so just keep it up there. Well, it was meant for stage, <laughs> but never got there because everybody's too bloody lazy. <laughs> AKA, I'm too bloody lazy because it stays here. Yeah, because it stays so, here. It was like, like, oh, you're going to bring... There's like a gonna weird a, portal of a window. Yeah. Hey, Are you going to bring the, the, the banner? No. <laughs> it's chilled. <laughs> Got to roll it up and put it into the... It doesn't even fit in the car, man. <laughs> this is not... It, yeah, it's got the long... <laughs> <laughs> it's got the long pole it's basically it's shortened it that way well, it's basically it made for the room way. like yeah. <laughs> but anyway yeah but um, Josh I just want to say as someone who met you through the whole local playing music mm. scene etc shot for Kif Times bro oh yeah it's only been Kif Times it's That's only been Kif Times like we've had such a good time with with Dawn and having a party yeah. and for instance, I was going to bring up the Fallen Prophets tour. I really want to talk about that because I, that just uh, popped up where we had the metal band, bro. Let's, let's talk about no, that, Josh. Let's, not let's talk, talk about, about the that, metal Josh. band, bro, man. I have very little recollection of the metal band, bro. Do I you know that you had to play drums picky. later that night? Apparently, I did. Yeah. You didn't play too bad. My cubic hated my guts after that. <laughs> Mikey. Mikey. All I had to do was play Limp Bizkit Break Stuff. Relatively simple song. Well, I dumbed it down a bit. And then I still dumbed it down even further on the night, I'm pretty sure. Well, mm-hmm. I remember, if, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, I think you won two bottles of brandy that day with, with I Dawn. I won. I joined with Dawn on the Three. tug of war. No, 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 hold on. You okay, you won us this. you won us with the with the welcome tug of war, to right? uh, Papa Jay's house. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's yeah. I can't think of a better name for that. But yeah. What? <laughs> I won the tug of war. Yeah, we won the tug of war. Yeah, jeez, it's all about I you. I won there. the down downs. Yeah. somehow in the team, I'm terrible at downing, but I still won that. And I won the oh, wet teacher competition. Team. Thank you very much. I won the wet teacher competition with Nathan McClure. All by ourselves, just because no one else would get naked, but we got naked. And I got oh, a, to you, I got a good double A cup over here. <laughs> Fun. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, okay. All right. All was on show that evening. I mean that that day. But I literally crawled up the stairs to Gandalf's. Literally crawled up. <laughs> and I have no recollection of playing. But anyway, that's but, what I was talking about. The fallen prophets is that the person that was really jawling hard with us. Because it was um, myself, you, the with Dawn dudes, and then remember Francois van der Mava. Yes. From yeah, Fallen Prophets. Man. Yeah, of course. And he, he was having a good proper jaw oh, as well. Oh, but we, I mean, that, that, was a whole, good night. that whole thing was a jaw. But let's, let's and just... we won the horns that night, by the way. Yeah, I don't even know, but what's that? Won the horns. Wasn't that on the same night? No, no, no. You won the horns. That, that was the... Hey! The, I think it was the only, it was the um, bursary. Oh, it was a bursary. the bursary. Oh, that was, yes. that was, I was also drunk that night. Oh, oh really? Sorry, mum. Because um, <laughs> the Fallen Prophets are surely, aren't they going to play uh, Rockstat soon? Yeah. Aren't they already gone? Uh, really? No. No. There no, August. There you go. Hey, they, they are starting the same day that I leave. Look at that. Second Here we go. That's, that's something I wanted to bring up because these oaks are so oh, energetic. Epic, man. They put a lot of effort into the show. So, 2nd of August is 
Rockstad Extreme Fest on the grounds of Transylvania. Holy moly. It looks awesome. Um, so good luck to you guys. Uh, yeah. We're rooting for you. Yeah, I know. Of course, man. Um, I think, uh, who played the last one? Thread of Omen, I think, played the last one. And then there was, a uh, was it Rockstad? Like Rockstad. Yeah, no, I know. No, no, no. Wasn't it? No, it's the first time I think we've gone international for Rockstar. I apologize no, if I'm wrong for that. No, but I think... I'm hit me up, because I think uh, yeah. Thread of Omen played last year. And I think uh, Middle... Uh, um, <laughs> I think um, Mind Assault have actually also played. Oh, you're right. So, I think it was Mind Assault. Yeah. yeah. So, or no, man. That was, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So good luck to the Fallen Prophets. You guys are going to make SA proud. I'm very keen. Peter Peterson, one of the nicest people mm, you'll yeah, ever I love meet. That guy. Um, and obviously, his, obviously his lovely girlfriend, uh, Marquita. Marquita, she's awesome as well. She takes some really beautiful shots badass of him. pictures, yes. All of my profile pictures have been of her. I'm just saying. No, absolutely. Well, majority of them. Sure. And then we've got, look, this is another big one. Um, I've also reached out to Patrick Davidson. I want to get him on here oh. to have a chat. Um, he recently did a, a really nice article on the local scene because it was an update from his 2012 article. So I'm very um, yeah, I read that excited to try and get him on here um, so we can actually expand on that um, topic because that's something that we lightly touched on last week uh, or last episode. I keep on having to repeat myself. It's starting to get <laughs> bloody annoying. I just need to get into like a rhythm where I know exactly... <laughs> what you know exactly what does, saying, right? next right. last episode last week etc etc um so let's pull up the winterfest card because oh, a card Yo. like it's like a winterfest is also a big one for me eh? why and it's the last, well, obviously it's last a big one. weekend that i'm ever here well not ever here Jeez, but i mean that's... like the last weekend that i'm here in my current state so i'm going to be having a big jewel at winterfest and oh. also look at that what Atlantic Atlantic South is going to be the last band that I hear live oh man in Thanks. South Africa for, for a very long time which is I, actually quite fitting I don't have my, my wallet on me I don't have cash to give you but thanks dude um, no, no I'm no, looking is, forward to, exactly to how jamming it would be, yeah. I'm looking forward to jamming that but l before we get there we've got first of all my homeboy Christy the Toy doing the artwork yeah of course uh these no, t-shirts are badass all of them yeah i'm mean, definitely gonna get the t-shirt these t-shirts are awesome um why is it not loading oh there we go so your t-shirts are where where's the where's the price um oh there we go you want to go pee quickly go for it Right, I, I our first myself. toilet break in uh, <laughs> Papa G's house history. I'm busting. I'm going to take everybody through um, the Winterfest merch situation. First of all, it was uh, designed by um, Christy DeToy. Damn, this guy is just next level. Um, if you don't know, he also did my Papa G's house logo for everything, basically. Um, it's just so wicked that the style everything is just oh, i didn't give him enough praise uh at last uh, at, at the last um episode but damn if you ever want anything wicked done in terms of illustration go to go to christy de toy he's a busy guy but uh he he really rocks out um so the t-shirt pre-orders are 210 220 rand and if you want to order the pre, because I don't think they sell at the actual event. So go to t-shirts at medalforafrica.com. That's where you need to email your pre-orders to. Um, and then I want to wait for Josh to get back here. So we start talking about, and um, so we can start talking about the, the lineup. But then we've got some posts here that I find are quite hilarious. Cost of entry, that's one thing that we can check out quickly. That's that's another. I don't know why people don't read the the discussion. They are post saying what what the entry is, but they they don't read the description. The the description in the main info says the cost of entry is 120 rand. Come on, people, read the information before commenting. Oh, that Damn! Was, that was better than an orgasm. All right, so we got the same venue, Metronome, which is in Brackenfall. It's in Vibin Avenue. Um, 
wicked venue. You played the last one. Mm. I played the last one Yo, as well, which was, was wicked. That summer fest was um, incredible. Was a rad lineup as well. I managed to to keep my shit together until the last <laughs> slot of of the night. It was was quite tough, but I managed to get right through. Actually, it was my only third two show. times headlining. Eh? Sorry, that? twice in a row headlining. Well, I wouldn't say yeah. You know, Whatever. Shut up, Josh. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Vibin Avenue in Brackenfell. Um, cost of entry is 120 Rand. The doors opening are at 4 o'clock. Look, we're going to have lots of time to talk about this because this is actually in July. But I want to make everybody know that this thing's coming mm. up. And Red Helen. We, we'll touch on it for. closer. So, uh, bar closes at 2 o'clock, which is a banger. Uh, Kill Frenzy, The Valley, Alpha Sequence, Sirdus, The War Insane, Red Helen from Joburg, Nebula Disrupt in Atlantic South. And then there's a bunch of other things like an outdoor place. And we're gonna, we, we'll go into the detail at a later stage because this is just the beginning. I can feel it festering. <laughs> I can feel it building up from my body. And um, I can't wait. Summerfest was a jam. Yo, and epic jam. If that's anything to go by, Winterfest is going to be an absolute banger as well. And then I want to talk about Fit for a King as well. Yes. Because that's coming up very, very soon. That's it's the June now. 28th. So by the time this podcast is, it's it's going to be talked Close. about in the next episode as well, Closer. clearly. <laughs> but we didn't touch on it last weekend because I was just so overly excited about the launching of papa g's house and getting yeah, to course, chat to jared and and we got stuck in a conversation between audio i mean uh, analog and digital etc cetera, etc cetera. so we kind of got away with ourselves plus we plus we had some very interesting technical issues where my um, camera actually ran out of battery etc so i've actually got a permanent power source for my camera now so i don't rely on battery so hopefully the video Everyone's will always Facebook. last, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we've got Fit for a King coming down to to South Africa. They're a metalcore and a kill, killer metalcore band from Texas in the United States, and it's in conjunction with Monster Energy, Hellfire, Cinnamon Whiskey Liqueur, Abbey Cottages Guesthouse, Copus SA, Vape King Northcliffe, and Init Apparel. We present Fit for a King in South Africa, June 2018. That's a lot of sponsors, eh? Um, that's the only. That's the way things happen, bro. Okay. You've got to get sponsors in order to get guys like these out, and Fair enough. everybody needs to Fair pull enough. together in order to. You've got a very simple way of looking at I things. I do. Like. I just, I just think it's one person who organizes everything, You've got to and then have they come down. Like all these entities together in order to make one great show. It's not. I mean, that's obviously. What they're drinking, what they're drinking, where they're staying, where they're staying, etc. Where they're smoking, cetera. and then where they're playing. That makes sense. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so in Cape Town, it's Truth and His Burden, as time divides. We featured them last episode. Tree House Burning, Atlantic South, One Day Sky and a Fet like yours from Joburg, and um, Truth and His Burden from Joburg as well. Dude, it's gonna be so killer. Mm. Um Mercury. We just did their tour as well. You know that? Put in. Truth in his burden. Yes, with Dawn played yeah. their, their show as well. Like, do we, no, I actually haven't ago. managed to catch. I know they were down last year, and yo, they're super good. Um, unfortunately, the gig wasn't very well attended, okay. which was a bit disappointing. Why? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it. Was, I think it was. I and mean, then you it get was, it was a the, Friday the night, final right? night with half. It was of a Cape Friday night at Gandalf's, and then. Saturday night was Surfer Rosa, I think. Mm. And apparently their Saturday night was... Killer. Killer, yeah. Sweet. But at Raw, it wasn't particularly well attended, which is a bit strange. Yeah, I mean, especially you know, leading up to the to the thing closing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so. Yeah, I mean, there was there was a lot of advertising done about it. There was a lot of... I mean, it's a very yeah, low just very, price. Very weird. It's just a... I have a feeling, feeling Cape feeling. Tonians. I have a doesn't feeling. make me, doesn't make me very that happy. That Cape Tonians though. don't like Friday nights much, you know, yeah. after work and you know all this. Sure. Shit. But Saturday nights are the, they're, they're the big nights. Yeah. You know. 
People are fickle, man. People yeah, choose. Well, Cape Town people are fickle. People choose the best thing that is available at that given moment in yeah. time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's quite crazy. Anyway, I just want to. It was quickly, a good show, regardless. Yeah. It's unbelievable, but it's gone now. What can we do? We all we can do is move forward and support them on the next tour. Uh, I thought you were talking about the whole raw with the. Oh. No, I was talking about Truth and His Bed. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I intend meeting those guys. Um, no, they're, they're I'm going up to game. Joburg, so I'm going to try and meet an all, all, when all those When are you going up to Joburg? Um, for Crank Tap. I want to go to Crank Tap, oh. dude. Mm, I'm going to go up really? and I'm going to go see Miss Mayer. Oh, it's a, like a man. what if situation. What if I didn't go? What if I did go? So why don't you take that? Why don't you take that little bit of doubt in your head and go... <laughs> <laughs> and buy the bloody ticket and go and no what ifs what this so I'm taking all the doubts I'd have to fly down oh, from I'm gonna get FOMO I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and I've just decided I'm going to go yeah I'd regardless. have to fly from Heathrow to Johannesburg that's so your problem not even. mine <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to shout out to to some of the people who've commented on the previous episode I think it's going to be very important I want to connect with you people so I'm going to set up I've set up a email address Papa G House. Have you set up an email address? Papa hey, G House now. at gmail.com. Yo. I will shout you out. If you send me emails, you will get... Shouted out. Sh- well, not shouted out. Your question <laughs> will be answered. Oh, okay. Truthfully, I don't know about that. But um, <laughs> Chantal Schmidt. Oh, Shanti. OMG, OMG lis- loving it. Listening between work. Joel Dixon. Hey. Love you, Joel. We actually going to be dealing with you in a little... St- but yeah, you must get him on. Matthew Farkerson, uh, my buddy Matt uh, Macha. Farkerson. I, I call him Matthew Farkerson. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then um, a couple of others. Um, let's just check quickly. Love that. I logo, just want right? everybody. To, I just want everybody to feel the love. Oh, I just. Yeah, there we go. You, no, you should point out your your Patrick Gandalf's Dudgeon. your Gandalf's toilet yeah. selfie. Yeah, just yeah, by yeah. the way, it was fantastic. I just thought it was apt, man. It I was. Just, I've spent a lot of time in those it's toilets. Like, it's like your pants aren't down or anything. You just sat on the toilet. Take, no, I put took my, a selfie. No, I put my um, my foot up on the seat, and I uh, took a selfie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's an no, appropriate place to take a suspicious. selfie. And uh, I'll, I'll let you carry on. Sorry. Yeah. Apologies. It's fine. I haven't had such a invasive guest in my entire <laughs> life. I'm going to die. Um, Charles Knight and Pullen. If it's not a Joel, don't not and pull in. Gary hey, Bennett, hey. Um, Patrick Dudgeon. Ah, oh, second place, Gary Bennett. Wayne Hendricks, Maori Mankata, and Glenn Watling. Watling um, shot all for the comments and the kind words. You guys are wicked. Um, I'm going to try and interact with everybody. Please send me emails, comment, or send me inboxes on the, on the Facebook page. Um, at the end of the day, I'm having conversations with my good buddies friends people i find interesting you know the deal read the description um just like read the info when you when you want to ask for a for a price of of an entry when it's right there but anyway i'm hopping on that i'm hopping on that no 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 no, i'm joking look um joshy i think we need to wrap this up my boy are you getting sad we 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 can go. It's a lot of fun. We can go. Um, no, no. If but it's a... this week is a big week. Um, this is only going to be aired next week, Thursday, which is the let's see, Thursday next week, Thursday is the fourteenth. Yeah. Um, this weekend coming is the Springboks versus Wales. Yeah. No. No. England. England. Sorry, the first test versus England. I'm obviously Always going to talk about my reaction because split decision oh, in my half. Yeah, because the first um, the first game against Wales in Washington D.C. was just rather dismal, and what happened? I I didn't want to go go into it. It, it was I had to go into Liverpool, so you can talk about. Yeah, the, it, it was uh, just a, a very poor display of rugby, and it was all the way in 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 the United States. It wasn't well received in the new, in the in the states either. It was, really? a, it was a low ratings. It was dismal weather. And the ref? I don't know about the ref. I didn't. I didn't keep that close of an eye on the whole situation. It just. I was 
watching and I just what I what I was seeing wasn't great. But really so I'm hoping this 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 week against England, which is something we'll talk about in two weeks time because these things come out in two weeks time. Oh every two weeks. Uh, hopefully there will be a massive improvement between the Wales and the England game. Otherwise, I'm just going to completely stop watching because there's also the um, the tri- the rugby championship coming up and they're playing Argentina twice after England yeah, and then they're playing times. New Zealand and Australia. So I'm a bit betwixt and between as to what's going on in the Springbok camp because there's also the 2019 World Cup mm. coming next year. So... I don't want to touch too much on that. I want to see these games play out. I want to give Rassi Rasmus a chance. And we'll see how it goes from there. Plus, then there's UFC 225, baby. The most stacked card 225. of the year. UFC 225, that's correct. We got... Um, um, and this is something I'm obviously going to react to in in the next episode because it's coming up is Yoel Romero versus Robert Whittaker. Then you've got Dos An- uh, Rafael... Uh, fighters, Dos eh? Anjos versus Colby Covington for the interim welterweight championship and it just goes on it's Rashad Evans uh, R- Rashad Evans um, Joey Benavides it's uh, Alistair Overeem Curtis Blades the list Tai Tuivasa the whole Whoosh. list goes on I apologize this is, this is for I, everybody I can play at UFC in, on in, Xbox in, and kick your ass but yeah, I exactly. won't uh, <laughs> no, you can't kick my ass. I can kick your anyway. ass. Anyway, I have done. So. Challenge accepted. <laughs> there we go. I'm switching it on. Switch on the PS4. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, lots to um, watch out for. Lots to be excited for. Um, but until then, my Papa G's pick this week yes. is... Let me think about this one. My Papa G's pick this week is actually for a movie. Um, movie? Yeah, I went, uh, watched a rec- uh, movie recently, which I quite thoroughly enjoyed, was uh, Pacific Rim Uprising. Oh, how good was that movie? Excellent, excellent. I loved it. Yo. It got quite shitty ratings, but I really enjoyed no, it. The first so half I'm, was slow. Second half was and, brilliant. And that uh, actress is absolutely breathtaking. She's like... No, okay. she's not, okay, she's she's not, not as young actually, as... Yeah, yeah she's okay. gorgeous. But um, yeah, shut up. <laughs> she is Don't over 21. Come with this nonsense. Yeah, she is. Um, and then my Papa G's pick for an album is Reverence Parkway Drive, baby. It is a banger. Get on a treadmill, oh, get into a gym, and listen oh, to that I'm album. And I guarantee you that you're going to listen to it <laughs> and you're going to love it and you're going to train harder than you've ever trained before. <laughs> and then for my local band um i could not not put this mm, band yeah, in place because well. they've cleaned up in the south african metal music awards i yeah. can't say samas because it's not samas it's the south african metal samus. music awards samas get a proud Sama and Sama. okay yeah. i didn't know that because it's double m they got three awards excellent um bunch of dudes i love them they're playing all of them. great tunes um Went three. Was I love them Best more? EP, best. They they cleaned up. They did clean. I tell up. you what, last one alive. Why don't you comment <laughs> on the post? Yeah, man. What I, exact I can see categories head, that can't. you guys won? Um, but this is an epic music video. It's very well done. It's very well written. Yeah. It's very well shot. Blah blah blah. Fish paste. I don't this think it was is... a Gandalf as well. What? Wasn't it? No, dude. It's, it's an live, outside live, vibe. But, oh, I don't know. But it's a great. I'm pretty sure it had something to do with Gandalf. It's a great. So it's, it's a, a great, great video. video. Um, this is last one alive with "Kiss the Ground," and uh, this is Papa G's house. I got Joshua Grady. Um, thanks for listening. Thank you. I'm okay. out. <laughs> <laughs>